This is a soy boy warning for anybody who's about to listen to this. Yes, this is 2020, but this was written in 2015. The story's and really funny. It's fun. really funny. I think it's absolutely hilarious. And There's some points in it that are very hyper-offensive. That I didn't read, so don't yeah. come at me. And if you're going to go in the comments, go away, because yeah. I don't care. Yeah. But, um, but without further ado, it's just funny as fuck. <laughs> I think it's I think it's genuine quality. It's yeah. the best ship host and green text yeah. I think we've came across in a while. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get into this. Yeah. Beta Uprising War Stories thread. 49 days since the Beta Uprising began. My team was trapped in a basement. Been there for the last nine days, all six of us. The normies collapsed the house over us, no way out. Tendy supplies were running low. One of the other robots was fiddling around with the radio trying to contact the cyborgs. Said if we could ally ourselves with them, we might be able to get out. Suddenly, the rubble started to clear. We saw the light. One guy jokingly said, Whee! <laughs> Another called him an autist. Normies come swarming in. We panic. I watch a man get his head bashed in with a container of protein powder. I throw a piss bottle and make my escape. <laughs> no tendies left. Stranded. No mummy to make more tendies. No piss bottles. I'm fucked, dot PNG. At the edge of the road, I see a Chad driving up in a jeep. Two Stacys with him. We hear the war cry of <laughs> I was sure I was going to die. Anyone interested in more? I saw some shit out. Chad drives closer and closer. I can smell the cheap vodka, hear the Stacys giggling. Suddenly a piss bottle comes flying out of nowhere. Chad goes down. Stacys panic. Flee. From a nearby rooftop, I see my saviour, a true neckbeard robot, trench coat, f- <laughs> trench coat filled with piss bottles, acne, Naruto headband. He tips his fedora at me and yells, Come on up, we have more tendies, brother. There is a ladder around back. I run around, climb up the ladder, eager for more tendies. They wouldn't be as good as mummies, but I'm too hungry to care. I get on the roof. Suddenly, I'm grabbed by two normies. I see a chad behind the neckbeard, holding a gun to his head. The neckbeard tears up, mouths, I'm sorry. I've been betrayed. Rage.png. I grab a normie and throw him off the roof. He screams, Why? <laughs> before his body hit the ground with a horrifying crunch. You, you too, I mumble. The other normie swings his iPhone at me. I dodge him and tackle the neckbeard. Grab a piss bottle from his jacket, throw it at the normies. The chat is backing up. Bruh, come on, man. You're cool. I know this, man. We can hit the clubs later. <laughs> I hate myself. I, <laughs> I throw another piss bottle at him. He doesn't stand back. I punch the neckbeard across the face. He doesn't feel it through the blubber. <laughs> thick, thick blubber. <laughs> the neckbeard yells, I had no choice. The chads had me. It was bait. The other chad isn't dead. It was a fake piss bottle. The chad from before is crawling up the ladder. Before I can react, my eyes are blinded by protein powder. I hear commotion as my eyes clear. The neckbeer has the chad on the ground. He's choking a mite with a dummy macara. The chad stops breathing. The neckbeard stands and faces me. Knees weak, arms heavy. There's spaghetti stains on his coat. He mutters, I, I, I saved you. Please don't hurt me, please. I ponder it. I'm alone deep in chad territory. Nearest robot friendly outpost is Cyborg Camp, 30 miles to the north. I'll never make it alone. I sigh. Ask the neckbeard, what's your name? Rippert, he stammers. Rippert, we're going to make it to the Cyborg outpost not far from here. We'll need one another to survive. He smiles, revealing his missing and rotting teeth. Oh, reminds me of Nick Bates. <laughs> we take the Chad's jeep. The Stacy's left it sitting there. As we're driving, I questioned him. What weaponry do you have? My personal dummy macra. Seven piss jugs and two pop- poop tanks. <laughs> I want to know what a poop tank is. I don't want I'd to like, know. Yeah, that's just not. Before long, we see a roadblock. Three Stacys sitting in front. I pull the jeep to the side of the road, about 30 metres away from them. I get out of the car, tell Rupert we need to be stealthy. He's sweating, not moving. I notice a patch in his sleeve. The smug Pepe division. <laughs> oh, God. Impossible. The smug pepes were the original leaders of the robot resistance. The legendary dude bro Chad, Brad, killed them all by day 15. I ask Rupert, wait, were you a member of the smug pepe division? His eyes widen. He bolts. Narudurun duck gif, arms behind him. The Stacys giggle as he charges them. They lay down a smoke screen of mace and perfume. The crazy fucker goes right through it. 
I've never seen a man tank such a blow before. He leaps into the air, pulls out a poop tank and throws it down at the Stacys in a single smooth move. Holy shit, dot JPEG. There's no way he's still alive. No sane man uses a poop tank when he's still within 10 metres of it. The shit cloud clears and I see a fat silhouette coming out of the cloud. This crazy fucker is still alive, walking out of the cloud. Nothing is left of the Stacys but a few silicone tit implants. Rupert nervously rubs his hands together and looks away from me. I, I beat this sti- He stammers. Can't get the sentence out. I stop him before he keeps embarrassing himself. It's okay, man. Let's keep going. He's a smug Pepe, no doubt. What happened to him? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is Coinbase. Have you been thinking about getting into cryptocurrency recently with everything that's going on? Well, maybe now would be a good time to get into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Litecoin. Well, why not consider using Coinbase? It's a great all-in-one platform to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. And one of the features that I think is pretty based is being able to set up a recurring purchase be it every day, every week or a month. It makes it much easier to slowly invest into crypto. And also, being able to set up alerts when a cryptocurrency goes over a set amount makes it far easier to cash out big time. We've all seen the videos of, you know, the yeah. uh, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> yeah, you know. getting the alerts really help. And best of all, you will receive 10 US dollars of Bitcoin when you buy or sell 100 US dollars or more on Coinbase. Also, we get a tenner, you get a tenner, and then if you invite any of your friends, you also get another tenner. So, look, win-win. So what are you waiting for? If there's ever been a time to start getting into crypto and making a quick buck, now is the time. So quick, go check out the top link down below and get the invite and get yourself a tenner and get yourself into that cryptocurrencies. Now let's get back to the video. We make it another 15 miles before we decide to set up camp for the night. Rupert clings to his dummy makara. His waifu is shit. But I don't comment, considering he's saved me twice in a day. I roast tendies over the fire. Disgusting. Microwave tendies made by mummy are the only good tendies. Rupert suddenly blurts out, I, I know where more of the smug peppies are. I glance at him. You're crazy, they're all dead. N no, Tyrone has them trapped somewhere in Deadlift City. <laughs> <laughs> Deadlift City! Oh. My heart sinks at the mention. The Chads created Deadlift City as their capital shortly after the war started. No robot or cyborg has emerged alive. Not even normies are allowed in. Only pure, pure blood alphas. <laughs> The normies sit outside, tagging Chads and Stacys in their Instagram pictures and hoping they'll get promoted. Rupert, we can't possibly save them. Deadlift City is impenetrable. Rupert looks at the ground like his mother just took away 10 GBP. I throw a blanket over myself and go to sleep. Next morning, we make good time. Only encounter two normie units on the road. Rupert's piss bottle accuracy is second to none. What could break such a legendary warrior? We arrive at the cyborg fort. It's an old gated house. The other ones around it are bombed out. Patrolling troops aim their shit cannons at us as we approach the gates, but none try to stop us. In front of the gates, an Indian man stops us. Seeing as this is 2020 and YouTube will strike us down hard, I am not doing the Indian accent, so... Robots, what are you doing? What do you need? Cyborg territory is not a safe place for your kind. Rupert turns away from the Indian. The Indian catches a glimpse of the smug Pepe badge. Never mind, sir, please, I apologise, right this way. He opens the gate, we drive through. I am Raj, I will be serving you, please make yourself comfortable. We're led to a large open foyer, couches and chairs everywhere, cyborgs playing video. <laughs> we get a few dirty glances, but nothing horrible. We're led upstairs and into an office. An average looking Anon is sitting at a desk. Kevin, a member of the Smug Pepes is here to speak to you. Kevin smiles. I am the leader of this establish, he slumps over. Steroid needles in his back. A Chad sniper. Raj screams. Throws me to the ground. He's laying on top of me. No homo. <laughs> I hear another cry. Feel blood on my face. He's taking shots for me. Rippard is nowhere to be seen. I crawl out of the room. Raj's body shielding me. Cyborgs downstairs are freaking out. Grabbing weapons. They'll use anything. Chad or robot weapons. In the confusion, I swipe a poop cannon sitting in the corner, five third rounds loaded. I run outside the house. Normies are crawling up the walls, over the gates. I see Chads in the distance, directing them. 
Where's Rupert? A normie swings a baseball bat at me. I dodge, fire a turd round into him. Another normie comes from behind, smacks me with a liquor bottle. I can't see. Protein powder, smoke screens everywhere. Wounded, stumbling. I hear an explosion. Hear screams. Cries of Ree! and bruh. <laughs> There's robots in the mix. Maybe I'll be saved. I catch a glimpse of a black coat lumbering through the crowd. Rupert! I run to him. We need to get out of here quickly. He doesn't turn, staring dead ahead. Sweating. Ten metres in front of him. The most muscled gigging... <laughs> you've ever seen I nearly said it no, I was don't, don't, don't. so close uh, the legendary John Marcus John Marcus John Marcus I think yeah. I was hyperventilating we're so fucked robots cyborgs fleeing from his presence John Marcus strides forward BBC dragging in the dirt behind him Ripper pulls out a pip tank and marches towards him I take a step back John Marcus brandishes a massive can of axe the can alone was twice the size of a manlet. Jamarcus himself stood five times as tall as any other normal chad. Rupert steps forward. Jamarcus dashes forward and swings the axe. Rupert blocks with his dummy macara, turns and counters with a piss bottle. Jamarcus deflects it with his BBC. Rupert uses the second to leap in. A poop jug. Before he can deploy it, Jamarcus swats him aside. He hits the ground and rolls. I see him wince in pain. I rush towards Rupert, but the BBC smacks me across the face. I go flying, crash into the fence. Can't see, blood everywhere. I think about mummy. Tendies. Robots 9000. Better times. Everything's starting to go black. I swear I saw my wifey in the distance as I embraced the void. Suddenly, an air splitting. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny. Ray. <laughs> Big man Ray. Autism levels that no man should possess. I can't see the battlefield. Jamarcus has covered it in axe, but I hear the never-ending cry: "Die, Die Normie!" Ray. <laughs> Ray. Ray. <laughs> the very sound alone brought the taste of tendies to my mouth. All the other robots and cyborgs have fled. Even Jamarcus's normies have backed off. The axe clears. Jamarcus is dead. The axe can is crumpled in Rippert's hand. A bloody dummy macara is in his other hand. His eyes are bloodshot. Like a man after 30 hours of anime in one sitting. Very slowly, Rippert takes out a piece of paper. Scribbles a note on it. Lays it on Jamarcus. Takes a picture with some G-approved smartphone. And stumbles towards me. Offers me a tendy. The normie forces a fled. What was that note? I ask, still stunned. Timestamp. Time <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a new fag? He <laughs> mutters. He turns red with regret. I laughed. You killed Jamarcus. Rupert looks away. You, you too. <laughs> I walk. I love this shit off. It's I walk towards our jeep. Where are we going next? He asked. Deadlift City. We ride the jeep all night long. Rupert is quiet as always. Once again, I marvel at the autism. He hasn't taken off the Naruto headband or the fedora. His jacket smells like piss. He's wearing fingerless gloves and playing Battle Ollie from Space on his Vita, not even using headphones. I can't complain. In the distance over the horizon, the centerpiece of Deadlift City, the Grand Tar itself, the spire of Ziz. Fit was the only board to defect to the chads when the uprising began. Once again, I look at Rupert and wonder what part he had in it. All of the smug pepes were influential and powerful. It takes another three days of driving before we reach the walls of the city. To my surprise, there are no normies, only robot camps. We're greeted by a man named Eugene, one of the sad wojaks who took over shortly after Brad exterminated the smug pepes. He heard about how Rippert killed Jamarcus, but doesn't question him about it. Do they know one another? The tower has been under siege for six days. Robot forces are pouring in from every basement. Neats leaving their houses for the first time to participate in this siege. No creatine has entered the city in this time. The chads are growing restless. Eugene drinks imported chad vodka as he explains the plans. Tomorrow morning we'll strike. It's a Monday, when Neats are strongest. I want a squad on all four gates. Tear them down. Wear panties over your head and face to protect yourself from axe or mace. Don't get separated. 
Once we hit the tower, we'll secure the perimeter to prevent Chad reinforcements from reaching the tower. We'll clean out the tower. All but the final room, where the ruler of the Chads is. Then we'll send in Rupert and finish this war once and for all. I dream that night. Mummy's tendies, a GBP sheet with 10,000 points. But I wake up to a harsher reality. Rare. 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 <laughs> the first troops have entered the city. I'm being sent in last, along with Rippert. They want him fresh to fight with the leader of the Chads. The identity of the Chad leader is unknown. Intel reveals that he directs the war from the tower, but nobody has ever seen his face or heard his name. Hours later, we're ordered to enter the city. Panties on face, trench coats loaded with piss bottles. Eugene comes with us. Bodies everywhere. Sweat. Blood. At what cost? What do we gain from this? What makes us different from the Chads? I clear my head. I'm a soldier, here to fight, not to question robot ideologies. We approach the tower. Can't even see the top from the base of it. Eugene drinks back some more Chad vodka. The tower is clean. We've killed every Chad in it. And our perimeter will prevent more from coming in. No robot troops either. We can't risk anyone being caught in the crossfire. We're sending you two in alone. Take this. Eugene passes Rupert his personal flashlight. <laughs> A powerful weapon by any means. No greater honour, Rupert buys. We enter the tower. Soon as the door closes behind us, Rupert rushes down the stairs rather than up. I chase after him, yelling. He won't listen. I hear him sobbing. Twenty minutes later, we're in the basement. Bodies of robots piled twenty feet high. In the middle, the corpse of Tyrone. The true giga -nun. Rupert starts digging in the piles of bodies. Where are they? He mutters through tears. I yelled, They're dead, Rupert! We can end this war! Stop looking for the other smug pepes! <laughs> then suddenly, a voice. Finish the war, Rupert. Do what I could have done if fate was on my side. It couldn't be. The Raj? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know if we can actually say this guy's name. Um, we'll just say we'll the just Rog. Call him, we'll just call him Lodge from here okay. on out, okay? Rog, clinging to the last fibres of life. The true leader of the Smug Pepes. The originator of the Beta Uprising. I fall to me knees. <laughs> Rupert hugs him and cries. I will die soon, Elliot mutters. But I am glad to see you one final time. Rupert sobs harder. Always remember, my apprentice. Elliot pauses. You can't dodge the Rog. <laughs> Fuck. Carry the legacy of the ultimate gentleman. Elliot breathes his last euphoric breath. Rupert gently places the body on the ground and turns towards me. I am at peace now. Let's finish this. He rushes up the tower. We reach the top of the tower. The doors to the final room. The ultimate frat. <laughs> Behind them, the leader of the Chads. Without a second of hesitation, Rupert blows through the doors. The room is massive, ornate. On the brick wall, the body of Zs hangs from a cross. Below him stands another man. No, Eugene. Eugene takes another swig of the Chad vodka. I'll enjoy this, he mutters. I never should have trusted you from the first moment I saw the liquor, Rupert scowls. His face twists with tarred rage. I will avenge Zs. Eugene places a football helmet on his head. Z's deserved what he got. Elliot killed him fair and square. That's what you get for pushing the ultimate gentleman. Eugene pauses. In a flash of light, the two clash. No weapons, only fist. Rupert dodges, throws a piss bottle. It misses. Eugene scores a direct hit with a baseball. Rupert gasps in pain. But the fight continues. I thought it was over when Rupert hit Eugene with a poop tank. But the Chad simply tanked it. Suddenly, a scream. Protein in Rupert's eyes. A football to his crotch. He curls in a ball. This is the end. Eugene spits on him. Not even a good fight, bro. Eugene looks at me. And my blood turns cold. I'll fuck some Stacy's after this. In honour of all the good bros you've killed. Eugene pulls out a massive barbell. Twenty plates. He winds up for a swing. I close my eyes and wait my fate. The sound of a crack. Rippert is there. Half of him. He took the blow. The other half is on top of me. No final words. Rippert died for me. A rage like no other flows through me. A rage greater than any other. 
greater than that rage of burnt tendies. Greater than the rage of being rejected by a million Stacys. Great as the rage of Elliot m- himself. I stand up. Eugene laughs. What, bro? Want more run? <laughs> Want one more gaff? <laughs> and winds up for another blow. I pull out a piss bottle and charge. Dodge the barbell. With the force of a thousand autistic sons, the single piss bottle crashes into Eugene's face. <laughs> <laughs> The blow carries us both all the way back to the wall and right through it, tumbling through the air. We hit the ground and everything goes black. I wake up in a hospital bed. Eugene was killed on impact, but his body and my autism rage cushioned me enough for me to survive the fall. The beta uprising is over. The chads are nearly extinct. They may rise again, but will take many orgies for their numbers to recover. Rupert's funeral was a short event. I buried him with a pip jug and his Vita. He's with Elliot now. Without a ruler, the robots drifted back to their natural domains, shitty apartments and basements. The cyborgs returned to their wage cuck lives. I returned back home and enjoy a plate of hot tendies. Mummy gave me 70 GBP for ending the war. And that is where I've been since. There isn't a day that I haven't thought of Rippert. Never forget us, Robots 9000. The soldiers who fought the war for your right to shitpost here. Never forget Robots 9000. Well, um, all I can really ask is, if any of you guys are interested, definitely check out the advert. Um, because <laughs> yeah. uh, there's no we're chance... Not, we're not even going to apply not even... for ads in this, because no, there's, no point. there's no point. And plus, we don't really care, because the story's funny enough, we just wanted to do it anyway. Yeah, it was one of those ones. It's a light bit of Sunday reading for exactly. you for listening. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you guys have any of your own stories about the beater up guys, and uh, <laughs> maybe if we get enough like you know posts from you guys, I'd love to make another video on this. I think it's a really funny setting. I love all this stuff. Like I be honest with you, I really enjoy like you know the chicken tendy memes and all this, but they're very old and you know it it isn't really a thing anymore these no. days. But uh, definitely, if you have your own ones, leave them down below. If you got upset about some of the stuff in this... Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But We like, did try and not yeah. say as much things as we could, but look... It's like, you know how it is. Like, it was funny. I don't like, you know... If you get if that you, easily offended, you shouldn't be on the internet to begin with. So. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. But look, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. And definitely, please check out the fucking advert because we're not making any money. <laughs> 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 Bye.